Hi there. I'm Nancy from Black Sheep Knitting in Needham. It's a gorgeous sunny spring day here. Um, flowers are blooming and I'm making socks. So it's a wonderful, a sock is a wonderful project, particularly for um, the summer. If you don't want to knit with a big heavy wool something on your lap, a sock is a great thing. And I have one here, it's started is a great thing to carry around in a small bag wherever you are. You can carry it to the beach in a plastic bag, which is what I do, and you can sit and knit this small thing that will not make you hap, uh, hot when you're knitting. Now, for years, I've been making um, socks out of sock yarn, which we talked about before, fingering weight yarn on size 2 needles. and. Um, I, I liked making them, but they take time. So we got this yarn in the shop. It, it's a yarn by Regia, and it's a superwash wool that makes a pattern. And if you, you can see that it makes um, a really nice pattern. So you can see the way that the yarn is dyed creates this pattern. This is a worsted weight. And you would, these are some of the colors that we have. And they are, again, they're sort of springy colors, but of course you wouldn't wear these in the summer, um, maybe in the spring. Um, but once I started, this is another one. So once I started knitting, and this is the colorway, I didn't bring over that I'm knitting, but it makes this pattern. So the method that I'm using is called toe up. This is the toe, you begin at the toe. And I'm doing it on Magic Loop, which is a long 32-inch circular needle where you knit half of the stitches on one side, and then those stitches move, and the, the other stitches on the other needle come up to the needle, and you knit that other half. Um, and I'm not explaining that very well, and you do need to take a sock workshop or read directions to fully understand. But um, what I wanted to show you is how to cast on for this, and maybe later on um, I will show you further um, parts of the sock and how to do it. The reason I wanted to, sh to show you this is that these socks on a worsted weight are wonderful to wear. I just couldn't get over it when I made this and put it on my foot, and I thought, oh, why was I making those skinny, skimpy socks? Now, mind you, they're great, and they have a place, and these these are a heavier sock that you certainly can't wear with your loafers or whatever shoe you wear all the time. Um, but they're a great sock for around the house or in your boots when you're going out for a walk in the winter. These are fantastic. And my goal on this, because I was teaching a workshop in it, was to make a shorty sock. So I've planned on starting so you can see I've done the foot and the heel and now I'm going to knit a few more rows and do a ribbing and it's going to be an ankle sock. So I wear them a lot around the house um, in, with my slippers, my sort of slip-on slippers. And I think they're great. And the other good news is I made this in a day. So um, I did do a fair amount of knitting, but I got this far before supper time, and I do get up and do things in between my knitting, but it goes very quickly. So I thought I would show you how to do, and this is also to help the people who were in my workshop so they'll be able to see this, how to do a toe-up cast-on, and it's called, this method is called Judy's Magic Cast-On. So I'm now going to show you how to do this so you can refer to this when you're knitting your sock. So um, what I did and what I've learned to do with making socks over the years, and I also, Judy Wiener, who um, many of you knew, made hundreds of socks. And her method was the same as mine, is to make two at a time. But I don't do two at a time on one needle. I do two socks at a time. So were I not doing this for a workshop, I did this the other day in one sitting, what I would do and what I recommend for people to do is to do one segment 
at a time on two separate needles. So I took my skein of yarn and I divided it in two and you can easily do that by um, weighing it. You can put it on a um, scale, a gram scale. And what I did is I pulled out what I call the guts of this, found the beginning of the skein and pulled it out and started winding it. And this is a 100 gram skein, so when it got wound down, when I pulled out enough so that this weighed 50 grams, I knew I had the same amount for each sock. And one of the reasons for getting the same amount is that by knitting toe up, you can use up, you can knit it as long as you have yarn. So if you have two separate balls that weigh the same amount, your socks will be the same in, in uh, length. The other thing about this yarn is it does have a pattern. And if you are kind of fussy about how um, your socks come out that they match, I don't care if they match, um, but you might, you're going to have to go unwind till you find where, like here's this beige and then the pink that's after it. So you would want to start um, at that point. I'm not going to bother to do that. So uh, anyway, two socks at a time is good because when you do this cast on, if I cast on this sock today and knit it and then decided not to do the second sock, or it took me a month to do this, when I go back to, the do, to do the second sock, I'm going to forget how to cast on. I also might forget how to do the heel and to do the um, heel flap and the gusset. So if you do them one segment at a time on each of your, your needles, you will be um, finished. When you're finished, you'll have two socks instead of just one. So I want to show you the cast on, which is a little tricky, but once you get it, you get it. So I wanted to record this and have it so that um, people could go back and look at it. So I'm holding my needles pointing to the left. I have a needle on the top and a needle on the bottom, so I'm going to refer to top and bottom. I'm going to take my yarn with about, I don't know, I have a 18 inch tail. You won't need more than that. I'm going to loop the yarn, my working yarn, or what will eventually be my working yarn, is up here. So I have put this looped over the top needle and I'm going to twist it and that will bring this out. So as you can see, there's a twist there. That secures it. And so now I'm holding it with my index finger, the yarn wrapped around my index finger this way and about around my thumb that way. And so what you want to remember is index finger down and thumb finger up. So I'm going to come with the index finger. I'm coming through the middle and down over the bottom needle. And now I twist by just taking my hand that way. Now I'm going to put the thumb through the middle and over the top and I twist again. And my index finger comes through the middle and over the bottom. Twist thumb over the top, twist. So I'm going to do that, so it's twist through the middle and over the top, index bottom, thumb top. So now I have um, one, two, three, four, I have five on the top, I need one more on the bottom. And I'm going to twist that and turn this upside down keeping that last stitch twisted so because that's a stitch you don't want to lose it so it's got a good twist on there now my needles are pointing to the right and what you should see on the top are the bumps which are really going to end up being the reverse stockinette so to do magic loop on this and i'm not going to get into great de detail but i wanted you to see the cast on so you're going to pull out Again, we have a top needle and a bottom needle. I'm going to pull out the top needle, and that's going to do my knitting, and it's going to knit. I want these twisted and over. 
and I'm going to knit this row of stitches on the bottom needle. Remembering to keep that twisted and you want to be, as you're knitting, you want to see these sort of V's and you want the bumps on top. So I'm going to knit across Now on a pattern you would certainly, for a toe, you would put on more stitches than this, but this is for demonstration purposes. Now I've finished one side and I'm going to turn this around again so that my needle's pointing to the right and my um, reverse stockinette stitches are, are on top. So now I'm going to pull the stitches that had been sitting on the cable are now going to come up on the needle and you have to ease them on a little bit because they get they shrink a little bit when they've been on the cable and don't lose your needles on top so now again I have a top and a bottom here's my bottom here's my top the top one holds the stitches that I already knit so the stitches that have been knit have the working yarn attached to them and they are going back on the cable and you're going to knit the rest of the round keeping this behind and I'm going to knit your tail does not need to be this long by the way you can you know, cut it to maybe six inches, and eventually it will get hidden in your sock. And then you'll knit across these stitches. And there, again, that's pointing left. You turn it around and go to the right. And here again are your stockinette stitches. They are the reverse stockinette stitches, they are the inside of your sock. So this, these stitches that weren't knit on this round, come back up onto my needle. With my needle, the tips of my needle are at the right, and again I have a top needle and a bottom needle. The top needle pulls out and it knits the stitches on the bottom and I'll knit across and um, that's how you do a toe up cast on and maybe next time I'll do more portions more segments of the sock um, but I do recommend doing two at a time because then you remember how to do everything and you always want to turn your work around and the reverse stockinette bumpy stitches are inside and these are the stitches that you're going to knit across those V's. So that's it. That's a demonstration of Judy's Magic Cast On. And it gives you the look, if you've ever done top-down socks, you end with a Kitchener stitch, which is a method of grafting. You end up with the same look. So this is how the toe looks um, and when you open it up there it is and it's so it's kind of an invisible not really a seam but that's the toe of your sock okay so I do recommend it I, it took me a little time to um, switch over from top down socks to bottom up but there are many advantages to bottom up or toe up socks um, and Judy did eventually convince me. There are lots of methods to do a heel and maybe we'll, in time, we'll go over different ways to do a heel. Um, this one is pretty easy. Um, it's just a series of increases and then decreases on your heel flap. So um, that's it for today. I hope everybody has a good week of knitting Enjoy this weather, get out in the sunshine, get your vitamin D, 
It's good for you. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.